Fox News recently hosted an all-women town hall with former President Donald Trump, advertised as a chance for female voters to engage with the Republican candidate and ask questions that matter to them. The event was intended to showcase Trump's understanding of the issues important to women, topics like the economy, health care, and perhaps even reproductive rights. However, there was one small detail that Fox News failed to mention. The audience had been carefully curated, packed with local Republican supporters of Trump. This audience selection seemed less like a cross-section of undecided voters and more like a reunion of the president's fan club. To make matters even more interesting, Fox News didn't just stop at selecting an audience that already loved Trump. They went a step further by editing the broadcast to remove some of the more vocal displays of support. After all, nothing says fair and balanced, like making sure the enthusiasm isn't too obvious. In what could only be described as a remarkable feat of television magic, the network carefully trimmed out sections that might have made the event seem too staged so that viewers at home could enjoy the illusion of a neutral discussion without the distraction of too many chants of four more years. According to Fox, the town hall was designed to focus on the issues that matter most to women voters. While you might expect those issues to include topics like rising health care costs or concerns about education, it seems the real focus was on showcasing loyalty and excitement for Trump's candidacy. The women in the audience were less concerned with the nuances of policy and more eager to express their support for the former president. In fact, some of the most pressing questions appeared to revolve around Trump's charm and charisma rather than any substantive political issues. Of course, the fact that Fox News handpicked an audience full of Trump supporters is no surprise. What's impressive is how the network managed to edit the event into something that vaguely resembled an objective town hall. The post-production team certainly deserves credit for their editing skills delicately trimming the more enthusiastic moments to maintain the appearance of a serious, issue-based forum. It's not every day you see a town hall where the audience agrees on everything, but pretends not to be too loud about it. The carefully managed production didn't stop with the edits. The audience itself, made up of local Republican women, was a perfect picture of loyalty to the former president. These women were there to ask their heartfelt questions, though the questions themselves seemed a bit predictable. Rather than pressing Trump on how he plans to address inflation or the gender pay gap, the queries seemed more like invitations for Trump to reaffirm his greatness. Perhaps the most fascinating aspect of the town hall was how Fox News managed to present it as a spontaneous, unscripted event. With an audience that already loved Trump and a few well-placed cuts, the network delivered a smooth, polished broadcast that left little room for dissent. It was as if the entire event had been rehearsed, with applause on cue and no room for any challenging questions. Who could blame them for wanting to cut out the moments where the enthusiasm might have overwhelmed the conversation? In the end, Fox News gave its audience exactly what it wanted, a feel-good event that showcased Trump's unwavering support among Republican women. And sure, they may have skipped over some of the more obvious displays of loyalty to make the event seem more balanced. But in the world of televised political events, what matters more, reality or how well it's edited? What's most notable about this town hall is how it reflects a broader trend in politics and media. In an age where it's increasingly difficult to find truly neutral coverage, Fox News demonstrated just how far a little selective editing can go. By curating the audience and trimming the footage, they managed to craft a version of reality that was just polished enough to pass as impartial. The takeaway? When it comes to politics on TV, transparency and authenticity might just be optional. That's right. I mean, that, that is an extraordinary moment. And Hadass, she you ready. have some... Yeah, he, she was ready. And Hadass, you also have some new reporting about mm. who is in that audience for this all-woman town hall that Fox held uh, with Trump, which seemed like a very friendly audience for him. 
<laughs> oh, it wasn't just friendly. The yeah. audience was stacked with Trump supporters. Now, Fox presented this town hall as just an all-women's town hall, general voters. Mm -hmm. Never in their press release did they say who was going to be sitting in the audience. But in reality, the room was not only full of Trump supporters, people who are voting for Trump, but also people who are officially part of Republicans' women's organization. In fact, the first person who asked a question, she presented herself as Lisa from Milton, Georgia. She's actually Lisa, president of the Fulton County Republican Women's Group. So she is essentially almost a Republican official. There was also, we saw people come up, you know, wearing Trump pins. There was somebody who had an RNC delegate hat. But I think the most egregious thing that happened in this town hall was that mm -hmm. in one of the questions by a woman named Alicia, in the middle of her question, she yeah. said the following, I voted for you this morning. I hope they counted it, something along those lines. But mm. Fox edited out those handful of words in her question. So in the broadcast, when you saw, all you saw was her asking a question. She did make a joke about how the, the opposition probably sees the room being full of domestic terrorists. But those handful of words in the middle of the question that took maybe all of, you know, five seconds to say, those were selectively edited out. Why did Fox News do that? We asked them. They have not said anything back. Fox also edited out moments where the entire crowd broke out into chants of Trump, Trump, Trump. You could argue, okay, that was for wow. time. Maybe that took some time. But the reason we actually know that this happened is because CNN has an embed. Kate Sullivan, who travels with Trump, and she was there listening to this event live. She recorded it live. And that's where we are able to see the contrast between what was edited out and what was kept in. Now, it's not a problem necessarily to have a town hall with a bunch of Trump supporters or Republicans. That's fine. Sure. The issue is that Fox never disclosed this, not in their press release announcing the town hall. Harris Faulkner never said it on air. And anybody who got up and, and you know asked a question, they never said, you know, I'm president of this Republican group. Contrast mm. that with the Univision town hall where they did say you know I'm a registered Republican I'm a registered this I voted for you in the past that's the difference and that's why that disclosure matters because a regular voter is watching saying oh these women they're just a bunch of regular voters out there they were not just regular voters yeah they could have called it a pep rally instead of a town hall <laughs> uh, and, and Brian I want to play this moment from Univision's town hall with Trump which was more like a, a town hall exactly. uh, when a voter confronted him uh, it was fascinating let's watch I want to give you the opportunity to try to uh, win back um, my vote. Okay, um, your um, I say action and maybe inaction during your presidency and the last few years um, sort of, you know, was a little disturbing to me. You know, what uh, happened during January 6th um, and the fact that, you know, you waited so long to take action while your supporters were attacking the Capitol. This was a tiny percentage of the overall, which nobody sees and nobody, nobody shows. But that was a day of love from the standpoint of the millions. A day of love. I mean, you know, a couple of things to point out here, Brian. I mean, obviously, yeah. Trump continues to lie about what took place on January 6th. I mean, that's astonishing. But uh, one of, we can't play the entire clip. But d during that clip, and I don't know if you picked up on this, Brian, I'm sure you did. When they showed the audience listening to Trump responding to that man, there you could see there are women shaking their heads saying, I don't believe anything that he's saying. I mean, this was a pretty powerful moment. You don't see Trump confronted like this by voters very often. The audience